On today's episode, oh my goodness, let's talk about Uber Freight and the fact that I just bought a new truck. What? I'm just kidding. Uh, Uber Freight and the way they manipulate drivers and how they have all the power. They can see you from GPS. They know when you're looking at the app and they use that against you. Against you. Stick around. Find out. that pilot on the left that we met Jimmy at. Jimmy, hope you're doing good, man. Hope you're taking care of those three kids of yours. Blessings, man, and uh, stick with it. You'll get to that freedom of owner-operator eventually if you just plan it on your head and speak it in the truth and make it happen. But right now is the time to buy equipment, not the time to start your authority. So, hope it works out, though, brother. But it reminds me of seeing you. That guy hit his brakes quick. I'm turning, buddy. Get my blinker on. We're pulling to this one this time because it's the easier in and out instead of crossing traffic, of course. But uh, I've been here a couple times. I've been here with T-Dubs. Been here by myself. Uh-oh, kind of uh I'm just backing up here. Going for a different uh, fuel pump. I don't need fuel, so maybe he's just leaving. I don't know what he's doing. Well, I just need to pull through, so let's see what we're doing here. There's people walking. Yep, yep, yep. Is that one broken? Is it, if it's open, it's broken? No, no, no. All right, let's go uh, find somewhere to park. Refresh, check the hubs, and uh, get back out of here. They are chunking up that road. Woo! Taking care of it. All right, we got to walk because we parked way over there. <laughs> Okay, pretty girl, let's get down to Tampa. Only about 100 miles left. Get some sleep. Be ready for the morning. I don't know what we got going on. Uh, looks like they're getting ready to rip up the road. They've been laying down new. The whole right lane is brand new back there, but yeah, they're continuing it on up here, so. Be careful for two lanes down here. Be ready for two lanes. Chopping it up, scraping it up. There you go. The dump trucks lined up waiting to get their turn. Okay. Let's see, if we, let's see how much further up it takes to open up again. With that brand new right lane, it's pretty nice. Way station just south of Ocala. Ocala. Everybody's pulled in. All right, 45 miles an hour. We're not going to make that because we're already at 30. We're gaining on the people in front of us. Come on. Let's drop down to ninth gear. All right, all right. We're not ninth gear. I'm like, what, 14th gear? Did you say you have 14th gear? <laughs> 18 speed, which is what this truck has, is pretty much just a nine speed uh, with two different gears in each position, so you can split them. They call it. Oh, stay green, red, green, red, green. Okay, stay green. One guy got pulled in there. Or actually, that's just a car, I think. Just went in by himself. Stay 45. We're not a 45. It's a big old way station. Now they have one of those like um, pull-in bays where you can pull a whole truck in. Really get it inspected. Level three. Oh, that's a raw gear. We're gonna go back to the next one. That's a nice truck over there. I like his bumper. It's got lights all the way across the bottom of it, and then lights on both corners. It's pretty nice. Car hauling or a parking lot, you guys call it. Okay, okay. All right. Whatever. I could see the name of that truck. Whatever that was. Next stop, Tampa, 80 miles away. Almost there. Oh, switch gears, buddy, come on. There you go. You guys off here mowing, or what are they doing? Two trucks backed up, working on some electrical or something? Maybe that thing just got stuck. Oh, yeah, he got stuck. Dang it, man, what are you doing down there? All right, tease the beach for that. Let's go. Here we are, Tampa, here we are. The Hillsboro, Hillsboro Bay is right to our right. 
all the water, I guess, everything. That, I don't know if they have a big port here. If they have the shipping containers coming in, I would imagine. They do, but I don't know. This little side road right here, we go down this for another, like, four miles. And then we break off to the right, go straight down. Kind of a residential, I would say. And it's on the right, so I looked at it. It is for trucks. It's tight again. It's not a big place. But we will get there. And where's that? Top Golf? Is that all lit up right there? Oh, no, that's Carvana. I've heard that the car industry is doing pretty bad right now, too. Like the, the car maxes, the, the auctions, that kind of stuff. That There's, there's Top Golf right in front of us. Uh, just because the, the economy, nobody can afford it. I mean, credit scores are going down, I think. And car prices are luckily starting to come down. I sold my Hellcat right at the right time. I was asking 59.5 and I got 57.5. So I don't think I can get that right now. I definitely couldn't get that right now for my Hellcat. So got lucky, got blessed. The right person found it and that's it. Now maybe the right person will want to find my FLD. Um, I was looking into how much I put into that truck. I'm almost into that truck for like 18, 19,000. So I have to get at least that out of it to put that towards a sleeper. FLD or a classic or looking at the Western Star, I just can't stand the um, the sleeper. I hate the way it looks. It's like a, my, one of my friends described it as like they took a pig and <laughs> made a head of a pig and let put it out. It just it looks cool from the hood. Like the day cabs look cool, but the, that sleeper kind of ruins it. So, but it's a really spacious, nice sleeper. I've never been inside one. I've seen pictures or videos of people that have them, but. Um, I don't know if I can handle it, but if the right price comes along, it's a 12.7 and it's got a nice interior, yeah, chrome doesn't get you home, right? So we'll see. But uh, there's a lot of classic XLs out there. There's a lot of uh, FLDs, also full sleepers that are in the 20,000 range. Nothing that's kind of my style with a really nicely done interior. A lot of them are like just kind of half done or not done at all, pretty bad. So we'll find something, but uh, that's all in due time. Right now I'm looking for a dry van and I'm teeter on the fact that if I might get one of these $6,000, $5,000 ones, or I might just go for a $15,000 one that's real nice, like the one I'm pulling right now. Well, here we go. We're getting back on 301, so there's our exit. I don't know, because I can do that too. I can get a nicer one that won't need any really fixing up, hopefully, maybe some tires and brakes and chambers. I'll still do the bearings in the, in the uh, hubs, because we stay left up here. Kind of a weird little side road, like 75 is right there, but we're taking all these little side roads. Going 301 South. But anyways, yeah, I was thinking about that too, that will last longer. A lot of the, the rule of thumb for trailers also is like 10 years old, so mine's a 2015, so like 2025, but no one's ever asked that. They, I guess if your trailer was really beat up and had like a transparent roof where you can see like in through, then they might be like, hey, what year is this? But I am five years, almost six years of doing this never got asked like what year is my trailer and had someone come out and, like check it uh they've just said hey sweep it out sometimes it was like a super food grade or clean product whatever okay here we go we'll loop around this little uh roundabout we're almost there get some sleep probably get up at 4 35 a.m and uh i guess it's probably first come first serve but there's what three or four or five guys that were there with me getting loaded and I think they were all coming here too so or maybe they're going somewhere else I don't know I think one of them at least uh, was coming down here but yeah let's uh find a trailer let's find a truck but yeah they, I was just going off on a tangent about the uh car market but it's a truck market too it's all it's all markets except for houses for some reason houses are still older value our house is still like at the 440 450 range our main house and we bought that thing for 250 so that's great equity in it um but it's not like coming down. It's not drastic like 2008 where everything like fell off the map and everyone lost their house. So not everyone, but anybody that had bought in the last three or four years. All right, done rambling about the economy. Let's get some shut eye and uh, get an early delivery. Slept like a baby. Good morning. And I'm glad we are on this side of the train tracks. <sighs> four in the morning and was at four in the morning and the tears are falling and I'm gonna make it worth the fight. Did you know my brother went to high school with uh, Gwen Stefani? Pretty cool, right? <laughs> All right, lights off, military style. Trucks only, exit entrance. Okay, looks pretty wide open. 
Don't see where they're unloading the dry vans at, but we will find out. But they're here, they're working. That's all you can ask for. You can see a guard in there. Let's get on this scale nice and straight. Oh, oh my back's a little bit off. I'm going to have to back it up, Terry. Yeah, we're off the <laughs> back tire a little bit. We'll, we'll recorrect. Now they're on. All righty. So that's a small tolerance, probably a, maybe a foot on each side for you to be on this scale ride. And it's like not, uh, no railing on each side, you know? All right, let's see, that should be good. Okay. Paperwork, smile on our face. Good morning. Put this on your dash, it's somewhere visible, and then you're going to pull it straight down here to building number three right there. Those lights are way down there? Yep. Okay. And then there's a stop sign, you can probably see it. You can yeah. pull up to the stop sign and just wait there. Okay. And then someone's going to come get you, and then they'll take you back. There we go. Cool. Thanks, man. That is all you can ask for. Just for them to know who you are. See a little white car right there. That's Sorrento. That's exactly the car that T-Dub and I bought when we sold our red uh, Dodge or Dodge Ram that we bought back last year, which is pretty crazy. We got one of those though and it was an awesome car. Love to have a little small third row in the back. I did some Uber driving with it out there in Phoenix too. Phoenix was a great place to Uber. A lot of sporting events, Super Bowls there twice when we were living there. Um, pretty cool, not Super Bowl, Super Bowl there was once. I think it was twice the second time we, were, we moved away or we just moved, I don't know. But there was like the Nash Championship game and stuff like that. So always something. Anyways, as I'm rambling, let's hear from T Dubs about our giveaway for this first quarter of 2024. Uh, we're already into it. Three keywords are already out. So I'll drop them randomly in videos. And uh, from the middle of January till now is when you'll find them. And someone will get a lucky $500 at the Matt's Truck Show. And here's T Dubs to tell you about it. We are going to be at Matt's 2024 this year, and we've partnered up with safetyauditprep.com once again to be able to give you guys some money. We're going to be giving away a $500 gift card on Saturday, March 23rd at 1 p.m. We ask that you look for the five keywords in the videos. Please be a subscriber and be in the chat. I want to give a big shout out to Bo and Crystal for always partnering up with us to be able to bring back some money to you guys. Thank you guys for all your support, and we look forward to the giveaway. Thank you, beautiful T-Dubs, and that is our giveaway. And thank you, safetyautoprep.com, for always taking care of us and sponsoring our stuff. Great people over there. Any compliance needs, hit them up. If you don't know what compliance is, still hit them up. You're going to need it, especially if you have your own numbers. See two forklift guys way up ahead that are kind of just moving stuff around out there in the yard. And now we got one coming up from our left. And a bunch of people coming and going from work, so... Sure somebody will talk to us eventually. I don't know. They must be having shift change or a meeting or something. Because we've been here about 15 minutes. Sit at stop sign. We do have our number visible on our windshield. Uh, another truck just pulled up behind us. So they know we're here. But uh, probably doing a little shift change. But that's, that's fine. Four in the morning. Night shift to first shift, I guess. Good morning. Hey. Well, yeah. I did not expect that lady. She looks like she's maybe 50. And she's blaring the uh, little Carter CD. <laughs> little Wayne. <laughs> oh, man, that's cool. hip-hop music out here in Tampa. It's the same forklift that went past us and now came back to us, so I don't know. I don't know. The speed bumps back there, speed bumps right here. She just goes around them. Let's see what we got. Lights on so they know we're coming. Follow 
red lit up and blue lit up forklift. Okay, okay. Looks like it's gonna be pretty easy. There is a, oh, that's gonna be a, maybe a tight dock, I don't know. Pretty well see. This is all roofing though, lots of roofing out here. Trailers filling up some silos. Maybe we're just going around to somewhere else. I don't know. Oh, it smells like tar. Have you ever, like uh, in uh, California and in Arizona where I live, they would have these little like trailers, little like coffin looking boxes that were steaming tar out of them that would go around and like um, touch up their streets, fill in little cracks and little holes and stuff with this tar. That's what it smelled like right back then, old memory. Okay, we're going on a little journey. She stopped right there, maybe looking through my paperwork, maybe saying you need to go here or there, I don't know. Uh, she put her arm up and down, up and down. That means... Is she dancing? I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what she's doing. She's put her arms up and down, up and down. Okay, she wanted me to sound like whore. She pointed to the uh, sign, had her arms up and down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she's like, pulled her arms up and down, up and down. And then points to the sign, it says sound horn. Okay. All right. <laughs> she looks back at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, I've never been here, lady. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm following you. Uh, she's going on a little journey. We got a, is there another little uh, non, non verbal signal I'm going to get here? Hit my horn again? Uh, I don't know. They're messing with the propane tanks up here. Filling up the forklifts. Oh, oh, now she's going again. She got to pick, pick the next song on track. Hey, Mr. Carter, I am him. <laughs> That's a good CD. Oh, he's telling me to go through. Okay. So we're right back where we started. There's a check in gate over to the right. But we're going to have a nice. Okay, she says swing this way. Okay. Oh, oh, she wants. I see what we're doing. Okay. She said swing this way, but they're blocking where I need to go. Because I see the, the doors back to the left, I think. All right. You're saying come, come, come. Or does that mean back into that door? Because. <laughs> You want me to back up or come? Okay, right there, okay. Not very in informative. She could have just told me we're gonna swing all around and then. Okay, I see doors though. We're good. If this forklift wasn't, or uh, flatbed wasn't gonna be real easy, but we're gonna be able to do this. Come really wide and then go the other way. And then we'll be able to back it in. We gotta open our doors. Okay, okay. No alternative radius of the W9. Don't want to hit that that uh, flatbed. Another forklift coming to my right. Good thing those guys are lit up because they're everywhere. Clear this guy's trailer. Get back there. Get my doors open. Let's see what door she wants me in. Let's see what song she's listening to too. Got some nice poles in the middle of this road for us, like usual. close to that flatbed. I will be able to make it happen. Just a little bit of... Because there's only one door back there to get into. Give it about two feet from the back of that uh, 
flatbed. Now I'm about a foot away from these yellow poles and I'm still not lined up with my trailer to go to the left more because I can't swing my nose because of these poles right here. <laughs> oh my goodness. We'll get it guys, just taking some awesome powers. The people that design these places, I have no idea what you guys are doing. What are you doing? The poles right there, trucks right there, we're good. We'll get, we'll get this. <laughs> But I had to pull all the way up another little gap right back up there to get my trailer to get straight so I could get it back in the hole. We got this. But yeah, they don't make it easy for truckers at these uh, designed places. If that flatbed was a little bit further up, it would have made it a lot easier because he's right there on my back. Man, oh man. We got this. Okay, get it in there. That's all you can ask for those, a red light right when you hit the door. Okay. Good morning. That was a lot quicker than we were uh, loaded. So she's already done. The, the, the ramp was super loud, like, but bam, I don't know if it was too high or what, but. She just came up and said, I need you to pull up a little bit to undo the lock, because they lock in below your trailer. And uh, I did that, so now we'll, we'll sit there sign uh, Sorry, sign paperwork, and we'll be out of here. That was a quick unload. Four in the morning, and the tears are falling, I'm gonna make it worth the fight. Oh yeah, if you don't know that song, that's Gwen Stefani, or No Doubt was the name of her group. That's what I think of when I think of four in the morning. All right. Get the paperwork done. Let's get out of here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Look at that number. Oh, yeah. That way, you should pull up there, close your door, don't have to stop on the scale on your way out. Okay, just go right out. Yeah, up that south side. Thank you. You too. Enjoy that little Wayne lady. She is rocking. She's rocking something else right now. I couldn't understand it. Kind of had a uh, reggaeton feel to it oh my I know what's going on my, I got the dang uh, wheel chock still in there when she told me to pull up I forgot about taking that out oh, I'm right back it was a solid metal one so I could hear it's uh, scraping a little bit so I said ah oh, that's why it's the trucks not moving very easily <laughs> you'll do that sometimes you'll forget about them a lot of times it's the rubber ones you just kind of run over and forget but Seasons are good. I got a bunch of flatbeds out there on the street. Get out of here. Lights on. I can only close one door while I was back there. Got some gas cans with some pumps in the pond. There you go. And then we head on out of here. She said, Don't worry about the scale, just go. I said, Okay. It'll be a tight turn to make it out of here. Do not proceed until the scale is empty. Okay, let's go close our doors. My Volvo buddy that I was next to right there is uh, just pulling in. So he got here a little bit after me. There's still somebody on the scale, so I'm waiting for that to clear so I can get on out of here. It's been about five minutes. He's still sitting on the scale, so I don't know what's going on. I don't want to go through the entrance, but I, I probably can't make that um, that angle. It's too tight. I mean, I could if I backed up and went like Austin Powers it again, but. It's crazy, the difference in, in loads sometimes going smoothly or not, especially when you're a new driver and you get frustrated. That Volvo, he, his timing was great getting to where we were. He got there right before me. So he was able to back into a door no problem because there was four of them open, he could pick his one. And then right now when he gets here, there's no flatbeds back there. So he has the whole real estate to back it up. <laughs> so timing can make a load that much different. Even though we got, got it done, no problem. That guy moved the trailer out for us yesterday. Um, he just probably thinks, oh, this is easy. This is no problem, but I had to maneuver that uh, flatbed and I had to wait for that trailer to get pulled to get in there, but it's no big deal. It's part of trucking, but uh, to make it a load that much easier, that much harder if you're new or if you're new to backing. I don't know what's going on. I don't want to walk up there, but it's been just another three or four or five minutes. We're still just chilling. That entrance is wide open, but I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, 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 uh. I don't 
I can't see the driver or see if they're talking to each other, nothing like that. It's just sitting on the scale. Huh. Okay, we'll wait and see. Okay, not one person has come in this uh, entrance and two cars have exited it, so I'm gonna exit it. Oh, uh, and there's another car exiting on the other side over there, so I don't know what, they, what they're what they doing with the, the uh, it's actually an easier turn than the other one though to get out. What they're doing with the paperwork over there, but man, good luck, whatever they're doing. Okay, we're out of here, guys. Thank you very much, GAF. Man, we got a bunch of trucks on the road. That our computers go down or something. Well, maybe they said just wait a minute. I'm lucky I got in there, I guess, because these guys were not here when I <laughs> got here earlier. One, two, three flatbeds, <clears throat> another drive in, and another flatbed. Okay, here we go. Let's get out of here. It's been fun, Tampa. There is a really nice FLD over there. The paint's dull, but well taken care of, you can tell. Nice fog lights, nice headlights, nice lights everywhere. And then straight ahead, let me know what that is, guys. There's a dump truck going in there. That FLD is going in there with another like full tar uh, tarped trail like I used to run to the dump. The ones that had an actuator on the front or to go dump something. But is that the dump? What is that? Big old five lanes going there. Okay, let's turn and burn. Back to uh, 95 or 75, sorry. Highway 4. Would love to be going left right here, the other way towards the coast and going to Clearwater, but soon enough we'll get T Dubs and the boys back down here. There's a resort called the Opal Sands right there. Oh man, it's pretty. Real nice place, kind of a half moon design with a lot of windows facing the water. So beautiful spot if you ever come to Clearwater. But we are heading back towards those beautiful people. T-Dubs and uh, Cash Casing and Kyle. Over on the left, that is the Hard Rock Casino, Tampa Bay. Uh, we've never been there, we've seen it. T-Dubs and I do like a little bit of blackjack every now and then. <laughs> Playing a little bit, not too much, nothing crazy, because you really never win at casinos, but it's fun to sometimes go on the street. But I've actually never seen it, I've never come this way. There it is, Hard Rock. Big old parking garage and a big old structure. Sun should be coming up in what a couple hours. Okay, okay. Ocala, Ocala, or Naples. We'll choose the northbound. Okay, don't want to go any further south. I never really like if you're new out here, you're booking your own loads, don't go past Tampa, maybe Sarasota or something like that, a little bit like 45 minutes south. Don't go all the way down like the Punta Gorda or Fort Myers, it's just wasting your time. Same thing with Miami. Unless you have a reefer or have some contractor, have some freight coming out of that area, it's just you're doubling your deadhead even more to get out of Florida. Because uh, there's nothing here. You can get $400 from here in Atlanta, or you can go up towards Atlanta and get 500, 600 <laughs> for less loaded miles. So it just makes no sense. It's always been this way in the five years I've been, uh, six years now almost that I've been running these loads. Learned it like the first two years I was going a lot to the northeast coming down here a little bit but uh, then I started finding my bread and butter what I like to do no mountains down here easy on the fuel mileage easy on the truck uh, but you do deadhead out empty um, to get somewhere to a better market slept last night without the uh, green APU on it was like 46 degrees 47 but right now it's showing 37 degrees down here or up here we're, we're north of Tampa now and it's like towards Ocala. So uh, yeah, a little cold out here. A little cold front again in, in late uh, February. But yeah, making good time, making good progress, almost to Ocala. And then we'll cut back over to 301. Now you can see that sun coming up to the right. That guy's flying, looking for a ticket. Don't know if you guys can see it right there, but that's all fog to the right, like kind of covering whatever field that is or whatever that is. It is cold. Woo, 37 degrees. Sun keeps coming up. Gonna be gorgeous. Exiting old 329. Um, get refreshed, take over the trailer and truck. See what is going on. This beautiful morning in the middle of Florida. If you don't know what exit 329 is, it is where the 75 Chrome Shop is. 
If you don't know what the heck that is, I did not either when I first got into trucking. But it's a pretty prestigious um, truck show they have every year. And just a good, like, uh, chrome shop. It's right over there across the street. See it? Chrome shop. Okay, I don't think they're open right now. I don't know. No, it doesn't look like it. I don't need any chrome anyways. Chrome does not get you home. But I do need to check over my truck and everything else. But they kind of have that show in this parking lot right here. So that is what it is. Oh, those two are blocked. So I'm going to do what van lines did and go over the scales. Or North American, sorry. Moving company. Got him blocked. Hopefully he keeps going because I need to come in behind him. There you go. There you go. There you go. But yeah. We'll stop here, refresh. Maybe get a breakfast sandwich or something. Not super hungry, but a little something in my belly. And then proceed on up. Get to Jacksonville so we can get a load. Cold for Florida. Woo. I used the old uh, backup broken pump buckaroo, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Packed it up there next to the scale and go inside refresh. Come on out and uh, get back up to Savannah. Okay, pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever been in here in five years. But it looks like they have a restaurant all the way down there. So yeah, Popeye's, a pizza hut and vending machines. And a full restaurant. I feel refreshed and rejuvenated. Thank you, Broken Pump, for the parking spot. Uh, it looks like cursive writing in the sky right there, but you can't really tell what it says in <laughs> those clouds. Oh, wrong gear. Let's go back to second. Or third. Third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear. So yeah. Now we're going to go back to uh, sixth, no, fifth. 18 speeds, hard to, hard to, oh, there you go, put a truck in between two semis, that's cool, I like it. Okay, let's cruise around the barbershop and uh, get out of here, do a little horseshoe turn, 41 degrees now, the guy's bumper's hanging on for dear life, got a little strap through it, there you go, that guy's missing the bumper on the red one, a lot of missing teeth out here, Be careful parking at truck stops, we'll rip off your bumper. Nothing really crazy cool out here. There's a 990 right there, that truck right in front of us. That's a cool truck. That's like the newer version of mine. I imagine the interior is probably pretty similar. But the outside, I'm not a big fan of it. I like this old classic looking thing. Because I doubt the wind resistance on that one's any different than this one. They made it look a little cool. All right, come through here. I'm having a 75 chrome shop staring at us in the face. Got a bunch of old tires in the back of that trailer, a little storage trailer. Okay. Alright. That is an expensive car hauler right there. Bunch of Corvettes. C6s, C7s. No C8s though. Oh, another one right behind it. Oh, one C8 on the back. There you go. C6s, C5s. Oh, not C5s. One C8 in the back. There's nice. Those C8s <clears throat> catching my eye a little bit. I would love to have the new Z06. Heck of a motor. There's 75 chrome right over to our right. Um, if I was gonna do this again, I would definitely go to the pilot, like cross over and get one there because traffic coming out of here, getting back to 75, no bueno. And chrome shop looks cool though. They got like a little small truck outside. Looks like they have some bays too. I'm sure they do install. I've never been in there. If it was open, I would go walk in there, but it's a little too early for them probably. Some nice manicured trees. Got a huge row of cars coming down to my right, but I might have a gap that I can get through here as long as this RV goes. Oh no, I got a truck coming pretty quick to my left. Oh yeah, well, at least I can use that center lane unless nobody else comes in, comes in there. But what I was saying, those C8s, those uh, Corvettes, they're coming down in price, 60 grand. A couple I see in the high 50s, like 59 for like a base 2020, but not too expensive anymore. Okay, here's our gap. After the Beamer, here we go. Let's get in that center lane. Then we'll cross on over. But yeah, I would pull into the pilot, definitely. Oh, I need my sunglasses. That is shiny. <clears throat> okay, we got the first lane open. Let's go. And we are getting on 75 back northbound. We cut up a pollen shop. Oh, I should go there too. I should hang out here, but I don't have the time. I want to get home to my family. 
family first, but Chrome does get you home. But we missed the light, dang it. Beautiful sun coming up there though. Bypass on the way station. Not too busy this morning. Just hanging out, a couple trucks parked there overnight. Five miles an hour and cruising through. Okay. Clear skies behind us, but we are running into some fog or I don't know what we got here. Is it gonna clear up again? It's pretty it's probably because there's water right there, but yeah, it's gonna clear up again. That's trippy. Swamplands over there reminds me of the that movie with uh, Falcor, the never ending story where he's pulling the horse out of the uh, swamp that made me so sad. Uh oh, got some residue on this on the, the glass. There we go. Okay, clear skies again. Entering a little bit more of that fog. Got in front of me, hit the brakes. Uh, I've got pretty low visibility. What's going on? I can still see his back of his trailer. I'm gonna turn my lights on. But, uh, yeah. There's water to our left. There's like a little lake. Uh, but then this is little patches. Okay. Okay, 42 degrees in Florida. Since we are on this side of the road, we will stop here. If I was coming the other way, I would not. Because, as you can tell, this... Um, Peterbilt, he's gonna try and cross all the lanes. There's a Tacoma flying up behind me. It's a little bit off, he should be a little further over, but I guess, I guess they just like their curb ran over, so that's what we're gonna do for him. Nice and slowly. Ill advised to run over curbs when you're loaded. When you're empty, it's a little bit not as harsh on those tires. Man, everybody's got a rain in there. But he wasn't there, we would have been able to get past, but it's all good, we got it. But this is a cool love. This wasn't here for a while. I've, two, three years ago it was built. It's nice because it kind of breaks up from the 75 up to the 295 or the 10. Nice little, nice little truck stop in between them. I mean, there's a couple right off 301 also at, at uh, I-10. But again, they're all on the left side of the highway, so you have to kind of cross them. What do we got going on here, guys? You guys just kind of parked right where everyone turns? There you go. There you go, Pro Transport. I like it, Grand Forks, North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, and Peter built the Mansi uh, truck. Uh, Mo two and Sons. I don't, know, I don't know what that was. Oh goodness, are we parking or is this the line for? Oh my goodness, this is just a line to get into a <coughs> good old fuel station. That's what I don't know why Love is always like this. But I'm gonna blindside into those three spots on the right, go refresh, and then get on out of here. Got a sausage McMuffin from uh, McDonald's with some pink flamingos up there. I don't know. That's all I need to know. $1.99 for the sausage McGrill these days. It is $3.29 over here. Woo! Getting crazy. Gotta make more money. Gotta start working for Swift. Eh, maybe not. All right, let's go. Let's get up to uh, Jacksonville, Savannah. I was looking at the loads I was in there. Not looking good. Couple short, like, straight throughs that are around the area, but nothing going back towards where I live. That actually is a very good looking Tesla S. I like the wheels and I like that color, but I would never buy it. I would only buy a hybrid, hybrid Toyota Sienna. It's my next purchase, but that's like $60,000 for a minivan. Come on, come down a little bit in price. All right, let's get to the truck. Gonna merge on over. We have a, like a septic tanker or something. What is that? No, that's, not, that's like a... Uh, he's pulling a little... Something. Oh, he's giving him a uh, level one, maybe. He's testing his lights and stuff. Just going over his safety. Some of these older trucks, I mean, just trying to make money, trying to move something around and get hit by a DOT for like a full-on inspection, but I get it. You should have all your lights working. That kind of stuff, but that could get frustrating. Think they're picking on you. They're just trying to keep the, car, the cars and trucks on the road, I guess, that are uh, compliant with the safety of our roads. So, I don't know. But I can get, get why it can be frustrating. They are on it today. Got uh, another 
trooper guy grabbing the tequila guy, state trooper. So be careful coming up 301. They are doing some random checks on you. They are on the 301 today. My goodness. 58 degrees now. Beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. Oh uh, yeah, but man, don't speed through here. Back to Interstate 10. I'm gonna go right under it and continue on 301 around Jacksonville. Uh, skip that traffic and construction. And head up onto Savannah. That might be the only time or maybe even once before that I've seen this uh, way station closed. I don't think I've ever seen it closed. They do have cones out, so they're doing some kind of maintenance probably or recalibrating scales or fixing some part of the road, I don't know. Or that camera right there, but it's always open. So they're doing something. It's maybe recalibrating, I don't know, who knows. When that one's closed, we'll go to the uh, agricultural and then we'll be out of Florida. Pretty smooth, smooth sailing, no traffic, nothing crazy. Just that 301 had a bunch of people get pulled over. So keep it, get the speed down, don't be speeding out here. Especially if you have a CDL, guys. Uh, there's another Walmart truck over there. Well, it's a Warner truck pulling a Walmart trailer. If you have a CDL, even speeding in your own car, it really messes up your license. So no need to get there quick, get there safe, you know? All right, let's keep going to the agricultural. We are empty, and they pulled us in. Now the sign just says go ahead, but you can just go ahead, I guess. I don't know. Got the guy that's doing the weeds. It just says go ahead. I guess I want to still bring you in. I don't know, it's a nice beat over there though. Orange one, it's pretty with the reefer. Pretty, pretty color. Not my style, but pretty. I'm a Clemson fan, but not that Clemson. <laughs> That's pretty though, nice truck. I like the headlights, got those circle ones. Older peak. Alright, way station, we're out of here. Almost to Savannah. Get up here, get some lunch. Maybe some Chipotle. We got a yield to it. People coming from the other side, but there's nobody coming. Turn and burn! Woo! It's going W9. I can't believe it, guys. Today is the day we see them saving the signs. Oh, yeah. Actually, they're probably just, uh, Putting up a new one, but <laughs> we saw somebody working on one. Would have got over for him, but I had a Suzuki facing at me on a uh, uh, what's that hot shot trailer, double decker. All right, well we're just cruising. I thought you guys might want to see a sign being saved, though. So there's one in Georgia being saved. Jeez Louise, guys. Been sitting here. I actually stopped back. I was gonna stop in Chipotle, but I didn't want to deal with that traffic, so I stayed on the side of the road. It's a nice 990 also. See the headlights? I'll stick with the old W9 though. Anyways, we were sitting there looking at loads. That's when pops up. I'm like, okay, to do that. I kind of want to get home and see the kids and family, but money first, minimize deadhead, use what you can do. So I said, okay, 700 to two pickups. You got to go this place, this place, then go straight through and be there at 8 a.m., which isn't bad, isn't hard, but typically for two pickups, you want to get compensated for it. So, uh, Bid on it, bid 1100 and then they did this. I've never seen it rejected like that before. And then they sent the generic email that says, uh, this globe is booked by another carrier. So they're getting in your head. They're telling you, oh, you lost it, it's gone. So I said, okay, um, wait a little bit, check the app again, it's right back up there. Nobody bid on it, nobody booked it. Now it says my bid was rejected. I said, no, I've never seen rejected from Uber when you want to bid. So then I uh, bid higher, 11.5. Okay, then I start getting phone calls. And I'm, typically, uh, Uber Freight used to be based out of San Francisco, just like Tesla. They left California. Now they're in um, Texas, so it's a Texas number. If you see a four six nine, that's a broker trying to call you. So he called me twice. 
after he called me the first time, I bid up a little higher. I did, I think, 1,200. Called me again. So I said, okay. Um, then I waited like 10 minutes, left my bid there, brought it back down, and then I called back just to confirm it was Uber Freight, which it was. There was a guy, he didn't he didn't identify himself as Uber Freight. I said, hey, I just had a missed call from his number. He said, hey, is this uh, trying to get his load cover from Georgia? Ring con to McDonough. I'm like, yeah, it's me. He's like, what's your um, what's your MC? Can you confirm your MC and your carrier? I'm like, you called me, man. <laughs> it's it's RMD Freight. Here's my MC. He's like, okay, cool. I'm like, is this Uber Freight? He's like, yeah. I said, okay. Um, they said, yeah, we're trying to move that. Um, I said, well, I'm available. I'm sitting right here. I could be there at one o'clock. This is at like 11:30. I said, okay, okay. And I said, but that's the rate I'm going to do it for. It's a uh, two two pick one drop. I have the hours and I have the truck and I'm empty right now. I'm ready to go. And uh, he said, well, we can't do anything over 800. I said, well, I appreciate it, man. Uh, thanks for calling me. Uh, let him go. And then they put it back on the board at 800. So <laughs> the manipulation, guys, the way they make you feel like you're not going to get load, we control the spot market. What we take it for, what we take these bids for. I know there's different situations for everybody. I'm not preaching that. But if we all stick to our guns like this, it brings rates up, rates up and you get paid worth what your truck's worth. Because it's going to cost me that, some money and fuel to get there. Uh, my time overnight and, and uh, two pickups so crazy thing about all this is i'm at the exit you can see right here the pickup is literally right there i'm less than a half mile from it but i'm gonna go get some lunch probably won't get the load but it'll let uber freight know they might need to talk to the customer up that money or give more money to the drivers don't keep more money in the pocket of the brokers we're the ones doing all the work out here guys stick to your guns know your worth and while they continue to play games like dropping it another ten dollars <laughs> like, like that's gonna change anything um i am gonna get some tacos and guacamole because it's lunch time if we get this load or we don't it doesn't matter but i really am tired of the stigma of truck drivers just being dumb manipulative by a person in a laptop on a couch uh it's not all brokers there are some decent ones out there but a majority of them are young college grads or out of high school broker agents trying to just think that truckers are just dummies who they're going to pull one over on and get $500 for a load, $300 for a load. Typically it's about 15 to 20%. Uh, but sometimes these guys are getting 50% of a load because uh, if this customer needs to move, they're going to pay what they need to move. So stick to your guns and we'll bring these rates up together, guys, and we'll get a better stigma about truckers. But I am going to get guacamole. One chicken taco and a guacamole and a 20 ounce drink, $12. Woo! This is better than Chipotle, but for Chipotle, you get a lot more stuff. We can, like they're using this as storage. I'm gonna chill out here and uh, yeah, let's get some food and see what happens to this load because it's literally right behind us. Kind of like that guy. Took it upon myself to open the garage door. Why not, right? Get a little breeze in here. It's a beautiful day. Me, thank you. I just had a quick question. Is that the regular size guacamole? Because I paid six bucks for it. That's the small size. Okay, I, I ordered regular. What's your order number? Uh, 49. Okay, um, I'll get you for you. You know me, I love my guacamole. I said six dollars for that? With that many chips? Come on. So she said she'll bring it. Good, good, good. Well, that's more like it. All right. That's about, about the same size as Buffalo Wild Wings gives you. And they took the load off the board, so it's gone. There's, uh, I'm kind of glad it is, because the more you, we do this as owner operators, as people, as, as booking loads for your company or just a one truck operation like me, the more the rates will go up, because they'll push that load to the next day. But he really wanted to move it on the phone. He's like, I need to move this. I'm like, you got a truck sitting right here, it's empty, and I am right here at the pickup. But no, so hopefully he uh, moved, moved the price up or got someone else to take it for like 900 or 1,000. Uh, but just don't take it for what they're offering. Always negotiate, especially if it's a two pickup. You got to go to two separate facilities and get your truck loaded twice. That's definitely worth a thousand bucks. All right, I'll make some guac. Pretty good tacos. Let's go throw that away. Get back to the truck and um, keep checking out Truck Smarter for any loads that might may pop up. But I'm already had it in my mind. I'm just heading home today. Look for something for Friday on the truck delivering Monday. But it would have been nice to grab a little something going to Atlanta. But Uber Freight continues to be manipulating Uber Freight. We will see you later, Fuzzy's Tacos and Uber Freight's pickup. I hope you guys got that covered, but you probably got
got it pushed over to another day, but we tried. We tried to help them out, but the brokers are still trying to manipulate and keep the money in their pockets. So we're going to head home. I have a load that I'm already going to be probably booked on for tomorrow coming down to Daytona. Um, we're about $100 off on the offer right now, so we still have some for the weekend. There's a bunch of loads that are delivering um, next day, but I want to really spend a weekend with the boys because this is the longest I've been away for a while. I was out Sunday night till Friday afternoon. Just trying to catch some money out here and uh, not waste too many miles deadheading, but I'm, I'm going home now. I'm done with the, the games. So they must have been shipping from right here on the right somewhere. That's where it was going, picking up there, picking up somewhere else, and going over to South Atlanta. But I hope somebody uh, did the best they could for that. Or if they wanted to just need to get home, I understand it, but you know. Okay, back on 95 with the rest of them. Let's get up to 26, about 80 miles. Head back towards the house and hug those babies and hug T-dubs. Welcome to South Carolina. It is so good to see that side. Woo! All right. through Columbia. Finally made it through Columbia. If I uh, didn't want to get home to see the kids and the T-dubs, I would have just had a uh, snack or hang out, wait till Columbia calm down, look for loads, but let's get back home. We got a buddy of ours working on a load for us for tomorrow, delivering Monday. Uh, so I really wanted to get something back towards the house. That Uber one would have been fine. I could have dropped that in the morning and shot back over got some even out of Atlanta area or in between Atlanta and my house um, even by my lake property so it didn't work out though and uh, but this is that new part of road right here I like it it's gonna be real nice when this is opened up four lanes oh man but not yet um, so yeah we're just cruising getting back home it is gorgeous outside and 71 degrees let's get back to these kids and the beautiful t dubs later dudes later oh hi beautifuls oh you're so skinny What's up, guys? <laughs> she did? Good. Um, yeah, we'll build them tomorrow, buddy. It's dark right now. Cash, very proud of you for your uh, getting your honors thing, dude. That's super cool. Tiki, I see you, buddy. I know. I've been gone for a long time. It's the longest I've been gone in a while. Mwah. Okay. Oh, man. It smells like popcorn. What happened? He wants his iPad. It's up here. That's a cool shirt. He also fell. Oh, did you, did you fall? Okay. How's that dog so small? He's biting me. Oh, you fell on your bike? No, I fell on my bike. Oh. Did you have your helmet on? Yes. Good boy. Well, I missed you. Did you like having me going? Hmm? You stairs? Did you like having me going? Uh, yeah. Oh, thanks for the hugs, Bubba. They look real good. Oh, Kai, you're fine, buddy. I like that. You're not fine? It's drama. You made, uh, oh, I've been wanting one of these for years, guys. I, mean, I wanted a, uh, like a frame for my jersey. That's a jersey I have when I scored two touchdowns versus Cal. Close my eyes. Okay. Whoa, that's a heck of a house, guys. Wow, I like how the colors coordinate on the side. That is super cool. Think that's enough? There's a toilet. We need to get light in this room. Yeah. Really good job with those Wait, Legos. Oh, and you guys made windows? Yeah. No, it oh. came with windows. Well, you just came with windows? Oh. Yeah. I have a, there's a big window in the back. Like it, like it. Would you like how they got the colors to match on the sides? Like they made a little chevron, what's it called? Chevron. Chevron. I can't right. Let's go outside to see if the soccer's doing. I'm flying, see? Um, do you remember my house? Yeah? I finished it. Really? Lego one? Sweet. I just got some goals. For Nice. Got some goals for practicing soccer. I'm going to need a little more Legos. Just and like you want to start a fire, of course. Yeah. Okay. Z, good job, dude. All right, we got the goals up. We got the fearless I'm Murphy. Goal. Oh, my goalie. goodness. Oh, geez. You're the goalie? Oh, yeah. And T-Dubs is trying to start a fire. Oh, she's got one. Nice, but on that note... We'll see you on the next one. Bye. God bless you guys. Skinny dog. God bless you. I'm so glad to be home. I'm going to relax and I'll see you on the next one. On the next one. On the next one.